Greetings and welcome to the Jamaica Diaspora Show. Today, I have a very special guest, Mr. Kenneth Bennett Sr., who is a member of the West Indian Social Club. He is actually our oldest member at 96 years old. Mr. Bennett, welcome to the Jamaica Diaspora Show. Yes, thank you. It is indeed an honor for me to have you on the show today. And um, we, we want to talk about uh, your life, uh, right. your, your, your history, and this is Black History Month, right. and uh, we, we do want to uh, recognize the outstanding uh, contributions that uh, particularly um, the Jamaican uh, immigrant farm workers that came here to the greater Hartford area to um, uh, help in, in the too, establishment yeah. of of um, this this community. So uh, before I uh, get into some uh, some of the details, I just want to get a little bit on the background and, and, yes. and talk about where where you were born. In I was born in uh, Jamaica, West Indies, Clarendon, um, parish of Clarendon, ah, okay. district of Main Ridge. Mm. Attend Main Ridge Parochial School. Okay, now where is Mandarin? I know where Maypin is, I know where Chapman is. Well, Main Ridge, is, you would say between um, Frankfield and uh, Maypin. Oh, okay. Well, Chapleton is pretty much, you would say between Frankfield and Chapleton. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so um, you were amongst the uh, 4,000 Jamaicans that. Right, uh, 4,000 of us came up. As, we came up on two ships. Two ships? Two ships, yeah. We, when we came, we were the first set of West Indian into the United States in 1943 on okay. two ships. The SS Shank, that was a warship, mm -hmm. and the George Washington, which was a tourist boat that they converted in helping in the war. So 1,000 of us came up and the George Washington, mm -hmm. and 3,000, and the uh, Shank. Okay, see, now, I didn't, I didn't know, I, we had Mr. Uh, Yule Clark. Pardon me? Yule Clark uh, came to uh, the U.S. on the USS uh, David Shanks. Yeah. And uh, we had him on the show, and um, wasn't, wasn't aware about the um, George Washington. Well, I don't know, I don't think, I'm not sure if they make any more voyage uh -huh. after 1943. Okay. Because that was the first voyage. Okay. And 4,000 of us came, which it took us five nights and four days to reach the United States. Because after we were recruited, we were uh, transferred on the uh, train to Kingston and take the boat there. And as you know, coming to the United States, it's much easier go north from Montego Bay, St. James, mm -hmm. via Cuba to Miami, Florida. Mm -hmm. But at that time, the war was so severe, and uh, there was a lot of mine in the Atlantic and part of the Caribbean around the coast of Florida there. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want to uh, risk so many lives that way. Instead of going north, we go west, mm -hmm. travel all the way, almost into Mexico. Mm -hmm. And when we reach part way to Mexico, we take the, through the Gulf of Mexico to the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. We go through the Mississippi and finally end up in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, tell, tell, tell me about the... Um those four days on the on the boat. Tell me about well, your experience. At night, there was no light at night. Mm -hmm. We stay in the dark. Mm -hmm. And also, we have what you call a mine sweeper and a destroyer travel with us too. With you. That if we come across any enemy ship, they could, you know, defend us. And mm -hmm. the mine sweeper travel in front of the ship, them, that if any mine in the water, they would get it. But we were fortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, to make the voyage, and we lose one, one, one young man. Mm -hmm. We don't know 
what happened to him if he dropped off at some time in the night there. Mm -hmm. So it was 3,999 of us mm -hmm. entered the land. And we went down to Camp Pancha Train in mm -hmm. New Orleans. Now, so what, what, what is news to me yeah. is that there was two ships. Yes. Okay, because I'm aware of the USS David C. Shanks. The okay? Shank and the George Washington. The George Washington, I wasn't, I wasn't yeah. aware of. I 1,000 of us were at the George Washington. And they both left at the same time? No, or not at the same time, but oh, you know, but two of us, yeah. Within the, the same period it, of time. Within the same era, we get together there. So what, what, what the, you know, the war was going on in the United States, what, what, how did you become aware that you had this opportunity to take this voyage? How did you become aware of it? Well, as you know, World War II was going on, and um, Hitler was about to overrun the entire Europe. And England get involved, and the United States was helping them in 1940. Mm -hmm. And after the United States get involved in the war there, and in 1941, uh, the Japanese, they invade Pearl Harbor and mm -hmm. messed it up. And Churchill and Roosevelt met, mm -hmm. because uh, at that time, Jamaica was a colony under the British rule. Right, you were all British subjects. Uh, British subjects. You were British yeah. subjects. So yeah. how did they make this deal? Well, the, um, Churchill asked, I mean, Roosevelt asked Churchill for permission to, to get some of the men in the West Indies. Mm -hmm. And Roosevelt granted Churchill that privilege mm -hmm. and set up an example how he liked it. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, you know, raping and lynching was the time of the day, especially in the South. Mm -hmm. And there were certain rules set up. He said, I think that was the first time in history a list ever was set up for a black man. He said, there should be no discrimination of any kind. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, if we commit any crime here, they couldn't send us to jail mm -hmm. because it was an American subject. Mm -hmm. and they believe you wouldn't be fairly treated. Mm -hmm. So if you commit any crime, they would send you back to your destination, the island, mm -hmm. and they try you there. And if you're guilty, you will suffer the consequence just the same. Mm -hmm. But if you're not guilty, you'll go free. Mm -hmm. That's number two. Number one, there should be no discrimination of any kind. Mm -hmm. Number two, if you commit any crime, they couldn't send us to jail. Number three, if we didn't want to work, they couldn't let us work. They could only keep us for a time to win transportation, going back to the island, you go back to your destination. Mm -hmm. And number four, they set the standard of wage. At that time, uh, was the volunteer three dollars a day. Mm -hmm. But if you do peace work, it, it, it negotiate between you and your uh, um farmers and so forth. But it was a good setting. Mm -hmm. You know, it was pretty well protected because throughout the whole the whole era there from 1943 until 1949, no West Indian had ever gone to jail or get killed mm -hmm. or commit any serious crime. So so there's some things I want to ask you about the, the trip. Yeah. Um, any of the um, some of the for example uh, I know Lance Gordon Sr., yeah. um, who was a founder of the West Indian right, Central. Right. He was on he was on the um, U.S. Uh, he was on the the Shanks. The Shanks. Yeah. All right. Are there any of the travelers on any of those boats that you stayed in touch with or remember or um, well, f did you well, meet in um, in well, Hartford? A few years. I used to um, communicate with some of the boys, but they all, all died. Mm -hmm. One guy, there, there's one young man now still alive, but he's in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. Lawrence, a guy named Lawrence. Mm -hmm. He's in Pennsylvania with his daughter now. Mm -hmm. But around here, mm -hmm. there's no member that's alive. Around. So did you, but did you know uh, you were, you were the Clark? Did you know Clark. Mr. Clark? Did you know Mr. Clark? You all, you all, you all, Clark. Noel Clark. You all. Do. You all. That's his. Noel Clark. You all, Clark. Noel Clark. Right. 
Did that name ring a bell? Does he? No. Is, he was he was actually on the shanks. I mean, with four thousand men. I mean, well, I, you know. strong, but I'm on the side of Washington, <laughs> right. you know. And uh, lot of the guys then in the four thousand. I never met some right. of them. They are and there. They go different part right. of the country. Right. Some right. to Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Some went to Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, New mm -hmm. York. I went to New York. So so, but let me let me let me backtrack a little bit because. I want to I want to get into um, when you left who'd you leave behind you know how soon how soon after you left did you ever return when who did you leave when you left what family or well I leave I had my mother and, mm -hmm. and father and some brother and sister and brother mm -hmm. yeah but um but where well, are you in that in, were you the um, in the age range, were you younger, you, the older one? Uh, did you have like, were they younger brothers or? Well, yeah, but at that time, after Churchill and Roosevelt come to this and um, Churchill gave Roosevelt the permission to recruit men from the island. Mm -hmm. Well, the various people um, that in charge of various village, school, church and all that leader in the community they were contacted. If you have any criminal record, you couldn't come either. Mm -hmm. Or any disease, or it, just like how you recruit men to go to mm -hmm. the army. We went through, we had about 10 doctors check you all the way out. Mm -hmm. You either pass the test or you fail, you know. Mm -hmm. And then if you pass the test, they discuss all these different things, what things mm -hmm. were like, and so forth. But it was a good venture mm -hmm. because at that time, well, my family, not poor, not rich, but we have a l plenty of land. But what, what I was asking you about the family, the family. is, did you have younger brothers yeah, and I sisters? Younger, that, was anybody right. older than you? Were you the oldest? Yeah, I had an older brother than me, but if you didn't want to come, you didn't have to come. Right. Because it wasn't something that you forced, mm -hmm. was forced upon you. You have to decide that you want to come because... A lot of boys were scared, mm -hmm. but when you're young, sometimes, and mm -hmm. I read a lot about the United States, mm -hmm. when you're young, you're not really scared. Mm -hmm. And then I had one teacher named Williams. He gets certain amount of card, and there was some of us that he were very fond of, and he told us, I think it's a good venture. Because at that time... So where time, did you meet him? This huh? per, where, where did you meet him? Where was he was on the Well, book. I went to the school, main with the school. He was my teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, he was mm -hmm. my teacher. And then he called up some of us and said, it's a good venture if we mm -hmm. like it, you know. And, and he had encouraged them. Mm -hmm. If you want to come, he give you. He can send you over here. You know, you pass it. if you pass the test, then you'll come. Mm -hmm. He gave, because... A few of my boys didn't pass the test because eh, they have all kind of ridiculous type of thing tests. One of the tests was soft hand. You don't have to be sick, but if your hand too soft, mm -hmm. the guy mm -hmm. said, well, mm -hmm. you don't really look like a worker. He don't mm -hmm. take you. They had a chance to recruit mm -hmm. who they want to recruit. Mm -hmm. So you come or you don't come. You don't have to be sick, mm -hmm. uh, not for them to, to, to take you. You know, some, cause some guys that I know, that didn't pass the test. There was nothing wrong with them. They mm -hmm. only said the hand is too soft. Mm. So it was but everybody, everybody pretty much uh -huh. uh, knew how to farm, you know, in, in Jamaica. They they knew how to farm. Right, right, w right. Well, yeah, because we have plenty of land, like mm -hmm. sugar cane, coffee, and we raise a lot of stock, too. Mm -hmm. Because to be frank, my father used to hire people to help on the farm there. But when the war started, there was no shipment, no sh nothing shipped out like, like this. It takes like banana. You ship banana to the United States, Canada, mm -hmm. England, and other parts of Europe. Mm -hmm. But when the war started, everything closed down. Mm -hmm. There was no ship coming in and no ship going out. There was no money in the island. So mm -hmm. it was a good venture to venture mm -hmm. out and to get money because at that time, Three dollars a day was big money. That was good money. You know, yeah. Because my when I come to the United States here, over a period of years, in 1956, I bought my first new car, mm -hmm. a Bel Air. 
-hmm. for fifteen hundred dollars, one thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm. That was my first car. Mm -hmm. And and at that time, even native boys around, very few of them have a new car mm -hmm. because a lot of them wouldn't work like how we work, have a full time job mm -hmm. and a part time job. Mm -hmm. And secondly, like night, um, and after you get climatized to the place around and few other people them know you, you could even get side job and work different from the contract. Mm. You know, they didn't prevent you from work. From working outside. Yeah, you so could you work outside. Than one job. Job. But you, where you sign to work, the day is them, you have to work. But if it's not a working day, like Sundays and all like that, and you get a side job, you can go and do it, or at night time, mm. you can work too. Now, now, what I want to do right, I'm going to take a break right now. Yeah. And when we come back from the break, I want to talk more about um, the camp that when you left Jamaica, you went to the, the camp in, in Louisiana. New York, yeah. in, no, Louis, didn't you go to Louisiana? Did, did, did they, did, did, did they uh, go to that uh, camp? No, uh, no. See, we go to, um, um, we leave Kingston After Harbor. Above, you left Kingston Harbor, you went to Louisiana. Yeah, but some of the boys them in New, New uh, in Louisiana uh -huh. transfer back down to Florida. All right. Yeah, Let's they talk work about on the sugar plantation down there, but I never really go to Florida. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about we're gonna take a break right now. Yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about this All right, after okay. the break. Okay. We'll be right back with uh, Mr. Kenneth Bennett Sr and talk more about his journey to the United States from Kingston in 1943. We'll be right back. It is with great pleasure that I invite you to join us at the Caribbean 2020 HR 4939 Forum, the Afro-Caribbean Black History Gala and Awards, Friday, February 15th, 2019, and the Caribbean American Town Hall meeting on February 16th, 2019, in Boston, Massachusetts. As you may know, the U.S. Department of State, in coordination with the U.S. Agency for International Development, submitted a multi-year Caribbean strategy to Congress in June of 2017 that establishes a framework for enhancing the security and prosperity of the United States and its Caribbean partners. Given the proposed role of civil society and the private sector, we believe that it is incumbent on us members of the diaspora to support the dialogues that can lead to achieving the objectives of Caribbean 2020 framework strategies. Specifically, given the rich assets of the Metro Boston region and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts at large. The church, in particular, is a specific part of the community and as such, we think it's important for you to come out and let your voice be heard. Seats are limited to the education forum on Friday, February 15th. We are also requesting that you invite your congregation to all join us at the award gala and the Prosperity Town Hall Forum. Take a look at this schedule. The Forum on Education, organized in partnership with the Institute of Caribbean Studies, will explore the potential role of the Caribbean diaspora and friends of the Caribbean in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in support of the implementation of Caribbean 2020 strategy promulgated in accordance with the H.R. 4939 U.S. Caribbean Strategic Engagement Act. The gala and award reception is a highlight of our calendar of events. The Gala Awards provide recognition to our Caribbean American people of Massachusetts who have contributed to the development of the Caribbean diaspora community, which also includes our Caribbean youth. The Caribbean American Forum at Prosperity Town Hall meeting will explore the potential role 
of the Caribbean diaspora and friends of the Caribbean in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts with update on opportunities for Caribbean investments, diaspora home ownership and retirement, disaster relief, education, and health. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us at the foundation by calling 857-271-6006 or 617-459-1026. On behalf of the Board of Directors, we would like to thank you for your support and for considering this invitation. And we're back <coughs> with uh, Mr. Kenneth Bennett, Bennett uh, Sr. And we're talking about his journey to the United States in 1943. So now, Ms. Mr. Bennett, during the break you were talking about how you were um, recall this this journey can you can you talk to us about the the trip the four-day well, trip over your well, experience this trip I tell you it's it was a hero trip mm -hmm. and uh, number two there was some night it was very bad when this the sea the wave and this ship goes up go down they're not as modern as these ships because today when you ride on a ship, you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. when the waves go up, it come down. And sometimes the captain the, over the loudspeaker say, get off the deck, mm -hmm. get in your quarters. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the wave come up on come the ship. Up on the deck there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you are so sick. Sick, that seasick. It, it, if you mm -hmm. die, it w didn't make no difference. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Did you get sick? Yeah, I get sick mm -hmm. uh, oh, about two times, mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. afterward, mm -hmm. settle up. Even some of the soldiers, they get sick sometimes mm -hmm. when they wave and up and down and up and down, mm -hmm. you know. So, so did, did you feel, you know, at all afraid? A little bit, mm -hmm. but, you know, nothing mm -hmm. to create any great excitement. Did you feel afraid at all with the... No, the, no, no. Okay. Well, like, being afraid wasn't in our mm -hmm. feeling mm -hmm. because... After you get older, you figure about danger. But when you're young, mm -hmm. you didn't think about right. ships and all that stuff. Now, when you, you talked about the U-boats, the ger yeah. German U-boats, yeah. and the fact that you had a destroyer yeah. that was traveling with you yeah. to uh, protect you. Um, when you got to the camp, yeah. and that was the first stop in yeah. Louisiana. Luciana, yes. How long were you there, and what did you? What was? How long did you stay at that camp? Well, I, I, I didn't really stay. Well, to be frank, it really wasn't a camp. Mm -hmm. It was almost a country by itself, mm -hmm. because as soon as you get off the boat, each man get a number. They didn't mm -hmm. even call you by name no more, mm -hmm. and everything was secretive and so forth, mm -hmm. because. A lot of American boys that were in the camp there, I mean, United States citizens going down to the Far East, I'm going to Europe. Mm -hmm. They didn't even know that we were from a different country because mm -hmm. we all have on the same uniform. Mm -hmm. You know, you have on the khaki uh, army uniform. So you saw soldiers there? You saw U.S. soldiers yeah, right there? Was, yeah, okay. a lot of soldiers was in it. Yeah. The camp was like from here, I can't even explain to you, almost like from here to Springfield. Mm -hmm. It was like a country by itself. Mm -hmm. Plane coming in all night, all day, mm -hmm. train, truck, and a... I heard yes. they had German prisoners over huh? I, I heard they had German prisoners. You have everything there, there. I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But then you have different people who in charge of different parts. Because while I was there, even from the university, uh, uh, New Orleans there, a few nights to bring some girls from the university to come over there and sing, sing for us, mm -hmm. you know. So you have playground there and all that mm -hmm. thing with Mary Ground and other mm -hmm. part. Train coming in, train going, plane coming in, plane mm -hmm. going out. A lot of it activity. It was a lot of. It was a real excitement. Mm -hmm. You know. How long were you there? Well, I was there for one week. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was okay. there for one week, and then our train leave out from there to 
coming north, some go west, some mm -hmm. go east, all different areas. You took a train? Yeah, that's train. At, yeah, train? we leave down there by the train. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come, come all the way up. And on the train, they have, um, you have the dining, the dining car. Mm -hmm. And at that period, did they have a certain time the train over my lung? Mm -hmm. Over my lung, mm -hmm. the train, mm -hmm. yeah. And they have, they have the dining car there mm -hmm. with all different nationalities, people going different mm -hmm. places, different coats drop, different area. And when you're ready to eat, we go in the dining there and we eat and we go back to our place. The other people, them, white, they go and they eat. Did they, have, did they have the sleeping car porters then? You remember, well, remember, we, remember yeah, the brotherhood? Of, no, remember the brotherhood yeah. of the sleeping car porters? Right. Yeah. A. Philip Randolph was the first president of uh, that labor union. Did they have the black porters on right, those trains? Right. Did, did they have? Well, um, I didn't really see any black porter at that mm -hmm. time. That was 1943. Right. Because when Randolph, they become porters, that uh -huh. is more modern time. L later, that yeah, was after later, that, later. in the 50s maybe. But then we were yeah. mm -hmm. treated fairly well. They never, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just like the contract, they live up to the obligation. Mm -hmm. we, we was mistreated, we was nicely treated. All right, so you went, to New, you went to New York? I went to Hudson, New York, yeah. How long did you stay there? Well, I, I stayed up in New York there for in 1943 until 1944, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then later on, in uh, Roosevelt died in 1945. Mm -hmm. And the war also come to an end in 1945. Mm -hmm. So after the war come, we come on the War Manpower Act in 1943. Mm -hmm. But um, after the war, near to the cease of the war, you find them, um, like in Connecticut here, with these big tobacco corporations. They were shot a men. They, they, they were in the recruitment in 1943. But 1944, you have Lasbury. Mm -hmm. He was a um, congressman for the 60th District in Hartford. He owned, he owned one of the camps. Huh? He, he was owned the camp, Lasbury. Lasbury. He, he, was a, he owned one of the camps. Did he own the camp? Yeah, well, he was, uh, what, no, like a director. He, I oh. think, was with General Cigar. Oh. He was a supervisor and so mm. forth. And then he was the sixth congressman for the district. Oh. So they asked Congress to allow them to recruit men, or the leftover men who were supposed to go back to the island, the tobacco company could use. That's the way in 1944, mm -hmm. the tobacco company established and wide, and it continued on and on till 1949, mm -hmm. the, the uh, natives around, both black and white, jobs started to get scarce, and they start to squeal about foreign workers, because mm -hmm. the natives, they never really work like us, because mm -hmm. sometimes we had two jobs. Mm -hmm. They come and they work, they work till Friday. When they get paid Friday night, sometime they don't come back to work until Tuesday. Mm -hmm. But then we'll work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, night, days, mm -hmm. and all like that. You have, you, 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 you have an, um, a certain aspect or you have a desire to do something. You have your family, you work. A lot of the, lot of the people have worked just to feed the family, mm -hmm. and that's it. But you have the idea to work to save money for bigger things mm -hmm. and more things, and, and because we didn't really have that privilege with that amount of job and money around, so mm -hmm. quite like it was a privilege to do two, three jobs All and right. so forth. So you from New York to Connecticut. When did you come to Connecticut? Well, I came to Connecticut here in 1944, yeah. Okay, well, you, you... The end. After you left New York. 1945, yeah. After you left New York. Yeah, well, 1945. It's a 1945. All right. And so what camp were you at in, uh, in, in Connecticut? Well, in Windsor, I, Granby? We was at um, 
There's a hotel out on, um, in Wethersfield. I forget the name of the hotel mm. now. Mm. We stayed there, mm. and uh, some of the guys, them, that I stayed out in Rocky Hill there for a while. And then some of the guys, them at camp, the Durban in Windsor, and you have um, camp up in um, Manchester, Manchester, the Silver Lane. Mm -hmm. And also up in, um, I forgot the place now, um, um, you have several little camps around, but mm. the largest camp really was in Bradfield, because Bradfield was the headquarters. You have infirmary, doctors, nurses, mm -hmm. and all that. Because if you're sick, you have nurses to take care of you, and all that, and doctors, and so forth. How, what were the conditions like in the camp? Well, the camp was was all right, you know. You make it out, you know, it's a camp, you know, and um, you have to spread up your bed yourself and all like that and so forth. But you have a big kitchen and certain amount of the guys that work in the kitchen. Was it comfortable? Was it clean? Uh, clean, comfortable? Well, it was comfortable, you mm -hmm. know, and you have a few other guys them, that they use to help mm -hmm. maintain the camp also. Mm -hmm. You have a few other guys them stay and... They work in the kitchen and mm -hmm. help straighten out mm -hmm. any necessity at the camp. Now, now here's now uh, what I wanted to get into asking you about was um, when you arrived in in Hartford. Yeah. Um, were there any J Jamaicans here already? Were there? Well, yeah, yeah. Jamaican was in Hartford. They came 1944. So some was in Glastonbury. But, but were they, the Jamaicans that were here, were they all migrant workers? Were they all the migrant farm workers that were here? Well, those Jamaicans that were here, they came up 1944. Mm. So we came up 43, but, they, but mm. I tell you, Lasbury, they applied to the government and they get the go ahead and they recruit men in 1944. So a lot of was here 44, but mm. not before 44. And as you know, at that time, Connecticut used several thousand workers, not just mm -hmm. Westerners, but from the South, mm -hmm. like Florida mm -hmm. and Virginia and uh, Georgia, several bus load of girls them in the spring come up from the college. Mm -hmm. They bring them from the college. Oh, to work. And they, work, they put one guy and a girl together. You know, when they start with the tent, you had a girl, they sew, you pin, and they sew. Mm -hmm. You know, and they were pretty nice, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you help them, you know. Mm -hmm. Because they couldn't work, they'd send them back down, mm -hmm. and they're looking for money for the college and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So they had camp where they put the girls them to. But mm -hmm. in the days, we all worked together. But mm -hmm. it was a very, very interesting type of thing. Well. I'm going to take one more break. Yeah. Okay? All right. And after this break, I want to talk about the West Indian Social Club. I want to talk right. about the Sundown. Yeah. That, that club. We'll, we'll be right back with uh, Mr. Bennett. Uh, and check this out. America is a nation of immigrants. We've been coming here from time everlasting. From Alexander Hamilton, the first Secretary of the Treasury, we have contributed to making this country great already. Sidney Poitier, Shirley Chisholm, Mervyn Diamondly, Lord Patrick Ewing, General Colin Powell, and the list goes on and on and on. So hear me now. I want you to celebrate June as National Caribbean American Heritage Month because you know so we contribute to this country. And when you celebrate, celebrate it with pride. And we're back with Mr. Kenneth, Kenneth Bennett Sr. Um, we, were, we were talking about um, you being Hartford. Yeah. Um, how were you received by the African American community? How were you received by the women? Now, I know when the women were aware of the right, fact that right, they had right, all of these right, young Jamaican men right, in right, town. Right. <laughs> it was a group of young men. Uh -huh. And some of the most attractive young men come up with me. Mm -hmm. And right. young, young stud. Right. All right. Well, the women, they were delighted. Right. And the men, they were, to be frank, I give them some credit to. They, they didn't 
have no hard feeling at first, but after a while, a lot of the girls, some of them put themselves in the way to get involved with the guys them, and a lot of them lose the wife or the girlfriend, and so they wasn't too happy after a while, but we well, pretty much received pretty good that first when we came up. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're being pretty nice, I would say they were all right. I didn't really find a fault with them. But then uh, if you have your girlfriend or wife, I'm pretty soon you're gone. You're not going to like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that happened also after a while, you know. Now, so you, so when there were no, there was not a lot of, were there any Jamaican women here? No, no, no Jamaican women. When did they? When did the Jamaican women start to come? Jamaican women start to come here. Let me see, around in the fifties. Mm -hmm. You know, in the late forty, like forty nine, fifty. But where did? You no, know, in Jamaica, you could buy a ticket and go to England. And uh, when the work was kind of scarce, then they were doing a lot of work in England, and a lot of the girls and boys they leave and go to mm -hmm. England. And after they were in England, they find out a lot of them know that some of us was here. Mm -hmm. And they find out that they could just buy a ticket and come to the United States. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to have any mm -hmm. connection there. Only have to know you that mm -hmm. Kenneth Bennett is the United States. And if they're able to send a letter to you and you say mm -hmm. they can come, mm -hmm. they go down to the council and show where they're going. Mm -hmm. As long as they had the money, they just buy a ticket and come to the United States. Mm -hmm. But later on, it was changed. Mm -hmm. You have to get your visa from the country you were born. Mm -hmm. Because that were only set up for white folks, but the colored folks had to use it, and the British and the Americans they didn't like that. So they set a different rule. It can't happen now. Mm -hmm. But that time, it was OK. What, what about racism? What, huh? about, what about racism? Uh, racism. Racism, prejudice. Uh, well, racism was here, but not that bad, you know. The, the word racism was there, but as soon as contact move with people, it's a different thing because, you know, um, 19, uh, 1944, 45, 50, you couldn't marry a white woman in the state. Mm -hmm. You couldn't get no lice, but you could get it up in mass. Mm -hmm. But that don't mean there was not a lot of fun going on here. Mm -hmm. But if you get caught, and mm -hmm. if you could go to jail, mm -hmm. because it was like a forbidden thing. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that stuff was going on because... Now, white even, women were coming over to the camp? What? White women were coming to the camp? A lot of them. And look, not even the camp, even the damn farm there, the farm. Mm. It's summertime. You had one white girl who did. The girl them from South I'm talking about, mm -hmm. the deep racist girl them. Mm -hmm. They pretty much changed when they come not here. You mm -hmm. start to work with them. Mm -hmm. You work, you had one girl and you, you, you have what you, when you work in a tobacco plantation, you have what you call a horse, a long mm -hmm. bench. Mm -hmm. And you had to pin, mm -hmm. you got to pin the net mm -hmm. and the wires run up there. So you got to pin it with the pin and the girl mm -hmm. come behind you with her needle and sew. Mm -hmm. And after you get down there, she hold one end and you hold one end and move it down. Mm -hmm. But if the girl is slow and you've been doing it a long time, before you know you pin down and you have a needle and you have her pin down mm -hmm. there. And you're the greatest guy in the whole world because mm -hmm. some of them couldn't do much work mm -hmm. and if they didn't get the work done the company wouldn't keep them mm -hmm. but if you help them out then they stay also mm -hmm. they're in their camp and when they come out you all meet together before you go to the farm they bring you cake pie and all these type of stuff what what, what kind of activities that they have on the camp activities activity. they have any activities? well in the camp you have to create your own activity then not mm -hmm. much but, you know, you could go out and so forth. You play games and all that kind of stuff, you know. Did you go to that club, the Sundown? The Sundowner? The Sundown. Oh, yeah. I, the Sundown, I know when it started, before they even built it. Mm -hmm. But George Swan, you know, George Swan was one of the big guys at the Sundown. Mm -hmm. When it started, the Sundown. We had danced there, not even the Sundown alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think... Uh, 
the market street come down the half winter street you have what you call um the uh there was a big uh, uh, um hotel um, not hotel movie house where they show live picture like um Robinson and all that, uh, Count Bessie, they mm -hmm. come there and play. They pull it down also. You had a traveler's build on mm -hmm. that piece of land now. But down the sundown was down oh, in the Windsor, lower part. Windsor, Windsor and Street, in yeah. front of it, there you had a cotton club. You know, you had a cotton club. Was that a black club too? Huh? A black, African American? Well, yeah, yeah, black American, mm -hmm. both sides, yeah. You had a cotton club and you had the sundown. But yeah, because Judge Swan is, is a black man, he was mm. the one who really started the, the, the sundown. George Swan, was he Jamaican? No, no, American. No, American. American. Yeah. But um, I think his father's a Jew, though, you know. Mm. Yeah. So, Mr. Mr. You remember Mr. George Hudson? He used to tell me about. Ja yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He used to Hudson tell me. He died he, that he, not too long ago. Right. Well, he and I were together there, yeah. Mm -hmm. He used to tell me about it and, and that that's where you came up with the fact that now you need to start your own club and you, um, well, you all formed the, well, the West Indian, the, that's how the, you know, right, the West you Indian see, Social Club got started. Yeah, well, a lot of them, they get real prejudiced. And you, you go to some other club, them, the white club, them, they didn't really like that too much. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I could tell you honestly, um, the relationship at that time with Jews and Black was about two percent. We're very close. Jews good, and Black, good. The Jews, good, yeah, good relationship. And Black were very close. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recall the first Jew that have any substantial job in this state here. That was Ebi Rivikov. Ebi mm. I remember him. Yeah. Ebi mm -hmm. he became congressman mm -hmm. with the 6th District mm -hmm. of Hartford. Governor too, right? Yeah. Governor. That, that mm -hmm. was in uh, 1948. Mm -hmm. 1948. And then later on, he ran for governor. Mm -hmm. And he won, he won, that was, I think, um, 1952. Mm -hmm. He won by 200 votes, mm -hmm. every, every mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and later on, he was senator and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you, um, let me ask, now, what was your, f when did you actually get off the camp and start your family? What was your, what was your job? Well, after at the end, at the, nine and, at the end of 1949, mm -hmm. The native around just started to revolt, black and white. Mm -hmm. They didn't want foreigners here no more because job was getting scarce. And my boys, they worked so diligently that the farmers fall in love with our work. Mm -hmm. And whether you're white or not, if they had to use a guy, they prefer to use you and mm -hmm. because you're more dependable. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the drunkenness, you see, most West Indian didn't really drink alcohol much mm -hmm. because you didn't have that vast amount of money out there. And if mm -hmm. you have a family, and if you're going to get drunk, your family won't have enough food to eat. Mm -hmm. So either you buy the food and don't get drunk, mm -hmm. or you get drunk and you don't have a family. So that practice moved on forward. Mm -hmm. So they were more dependable. Do a full-time right. job, do two part-time job, mm -hmm. and always have money. Well, after after the camp, though. Yeah. After you left the camp, what 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 was your first job? What did you what kind of? Well, after I, after I leave there, my first real job was uh, with um, mm -hmm. um, Billings and Spencer. Mm -hmm. I used to, after I leave the camp, I do side job to have little. Come. Is that construction? In uh, mm. 1951, mm -hmm. I start on my real permanent job. And mm. the, the, the camp closed down at the end of 1949, 1950. Mm. 1950. 
So I do a lot of job uh, in the uh, 50, about 1951. I get a permanent job with um, Billings and Spencer on Park Street there. Mm. We had so, to start to draw social security and all that stuff. So would, when did you get married? I mean, huh? were you married or? No, no. I, um, what, with the movement there, after the natives, they start to revolt and foreigners staying here doing the job and they can't get no job. They go to the legislature and protest and the legislature reach a point, decide that all foreigners are supposed to go. Mm. But if you were here at that time for five years on the mainland and don't leave, you could file for your first paper. And within that long period of time, quite a few of the boys, they, some did marry and some hook up. So they get married to the American mm -hmm. girls. So if you're married to an American girl, you get half her citizenship. Mm -hmm. They couldn't really send you out if you didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. So a lot of How did you get to stay? You filed a paper? No, no. Well, I, I already served a five-year oh. time, so I didn't have to marry to stay here. Mm -hmm. I filed for my paper, you know. Mm -hmm. Did they ever try? Did somebody? Did they ever try and deny people that had stayed for the, the to, for the five years or however long they? No, were no. If you if you fill the five years, they can deny they you. They can't deny as you as long as you go through the procedure that they ask for. Mm -hmm. You got to get lie and and file your paper, mm -hmm. you know. And if you get married, they couldn't send you. They couldn't send you out the country, so mm -hmm. some get married and some stayed. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the girl, b boys them who were here long time, they had a girlfriend and they mm -hmm. finally mm -hmm. hooked up and all that. And I know I wanted to ask you, when, um, when, when did you go back or visit Jamaica after coming when to When I went back, that was down in 1952, yeah. Oh, you went back to yeah, visit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And, you know... My family are doing well, but we have plenty of land down there. Mm -hmm. But as I said, in 1943, there was no money in the island, regardless mm -hmm. of what land you have. Banana them, you got to just burn them, sugar cane. Mm -hmm. and we have a lot of cattle and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it was a good venture coming to the United States because at that time, three dollars a day was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Hell, you could get a pair of shoes for two dollars and a nice shoe and. Mm -hmm. All these type of stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, two pence, a loaf of bread and all that. You know, money did value a lot in those days. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So now, I guess, um, let's talk about the club. Yeah, when, the you club. when you joined the West Indian Social Club. Well, not, well to be frank, we actually started that club in 1949. You know, not mm -hmm. fully... Mm -hmm. License. Mm -hmm. When we were up in Bradley Field, Mills, mm -hmm. them, and mm -hmm. Reginald, mm -hmm. Leslie, and Parkinson, mm -hmm. he married a girl from um, Alabama. Now, this was is a nurse up there. Now, now, we got a charter yeah. that lists all of the founders yeah. of, of, uh, of the West of the club. And, you know, we got the charter. Yeah. And now I know my father was one of the founders. My mother would tell me yeah. that because he had an apartment on yeah. Avon Street, 107 East Avon Street. Well, yeah, Avon. And, and the, yeah, Avon Street. It's what? over right in there where the Harford graduates. Hold it, hold it. I know Avon Street. Um, yeah. what, on, what part of Avon Street were you living? We lived at 107. 107. It was up the dead oh, end. Was near up. back to Donald Street, 107. 107. Uh, Did he go up to that high? Evan Street Pliny. was a short street, you know. Which one? Yeah, short street. Yeah, what? Evan Street run Avon. from the yeah. Avon Street. Yeah. Run from the bridge that you see there right, now. Right, to the bridge. Right, to Main Street. Right. And cross there was Donald, they, Donald right. Street. My mother used to tell me, they used to meet at, at because they had a, my father had an apartment. Uh, they used to meet um, at, at the house until they started meeting at uh, uh, St. Benedict's Church. Oh, Benedict's Church. Oh, and yeah. and uh, the, some, of the, some of the farm workers well, used to look, come right. and they used to, you know, watch TV or, um, you know, if my father wasn't home, she would just, 
you know, invite them in because they didn't really have any um, any place else to go if he wasn't there. Yeah. But uh, she would tell me yeah. tell me about those those well, events. Well, they play domino and mm -hmm. different things here. But when it started up in Brad, if you start early, um, um, it, the club they should name the the start with Jamaican Council. Mm -hmm. But then it wasn't going on well, and this guy, um, Richardson, he's from Barbados. He said, he ain't no Jamaican. He was, he was a Barbadian, you know. Mm, right, so he was right. a Jamaican from Barbados. So they come up with the word West Indian social mm -hmm. because since he, he was from Jamaica. Jamaica. Right, right. That's the way you get the name, you know, but there's a lot of things. But on Evan Street there, because, you know, I was living on Evan Street one you time. You did too? From yeah, one yeah. time. So I know yeah. it pretty good. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. have the club, um, you have... They had a club on Evan Street, American mm -hmm. Club, mm -hmm. on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you a joke that have nothing. The, the first thing that I saw there in 1952, you know, um, this guy there, he died. He, um, Attorney Barlow. Attorney Barlow. Mm -hmm. You heard about Barlow. You know Barlow. Judge Barlow? Ba Judge Barlow. Mm -hmm. Judge Barlow. Mm -hmm. He's I not Jamaican, is he black? He's uh, an African-American? Well, yeah, well, he started to raise it because a lot of boys mm. that leave the girls, and some mm. of them married was just to stay, you know, and mm. different, different things. And some of the marriage again, you know, what you're accustomed to and what you like, the other person movement didn't blend with it. Mm -hmm. Because suppose he's a man who don't really like alcohol too much, mm -hmm. and somebody going to get drunk or mm -hmm. get drunk frequent. That's not going to work out too well, mm -hmm. you know, and so forth. So, um, Barlow, and the, the first um, fellow that been in the city council had for their, um, uh, from the funeral home uh, on uh, Barber Street, there was mm -hmm. his name. Um, Clark Funeral? No. What, Clark? Uh, Clark? Clark, Clark yeah. Funeral Home. Mm -hmm. Clark was the first colored man that ever served on the city council in Hartford, mm. Clark. Mm -hmm. And Barlow, he and Barlow was on Evan Street one night the, uh, when the Elks Club was on mm -hmm. there, the Elks Club. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you only had a handful of Puerto Rican mm -hmm. in, in Hartford. Mm -hmm. You could count them on one hand. I know some that lived on Avon Street, oh. I remember. When uh, I, when all I right. Was, mm -hmm. And what happened, uh, one Puerto Rican, I don't know what he had done, but the policeman was chasing him with the cruise, and he mm -hmm. rushed down, and he catch up with him, and he had a stick, mm -hmm. and he was beating, beating the Puerto Rican with a stick. Mm -hmm. And Clark come down and said to the policeman, said, instead of beating the guy with a stick like that, why don't you arrest him? Mm -hmm. And they arrest Clark immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Harris Clark immediately mm -hmm. and threw him the cruiser. Mm -hmm. the and Barlow mm -hmm. was there, but Barlow didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. But finally, they threw the case out because Clark said he didn't do anything. But mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of ridiculous mm -hmm. things that I've mm -hmm. seen in the world, you mm -hmm. know, that go. That was 1952. Mm -hmm. more, more, about the, more about the club. The club. What, what kind of positions did you did you serve on any positions? Well, I served on a lot of positions. I never was president. I mm -hmm. could be president many times, but mm -hmm. I never really did serve as president. But mm -hmm. I was trustee, chairman, mm -hmm. secretary, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. chaplain, mm -hmm. you know, for over the period of time. And do all kind of other things, but I, I never, and I was, um, first vice president, mm -hmm. but after that I didn't take the position for president because my wife got sick and mm -hmm. it was in the way so I didn't mm -hmm. bother with it. Well, yeah. well, well um, but we're, we're, we're running out of time, Yeah, <laughs> I'm told. <laughs> yeah, but, but then um, there was a lot of things. This mm -hmm. trip was a wonderful trip, you know, mm -hmm. and as I said, the natives the start to revolt against West, the foreigners staying here, mm -hmm. and they, they go to the legislature, 
so they closed it down. But 1952, they had to start up back the program because they, they was losing the crop. Mm -hmm. They couldn't get enough people to work. Mm -hmm. So the government grant. So it lasts for many years after that. So, so just like now we're yeah. having, we're having, um, uh, I want to say the um, resistance to foreigners. Foreigners. Well, back it don't change mm -hmm. the same thing with us. Mm -hmm. They said that we were taking all the job, mm -hmm. and afterward, after they closed down the movement, the farmers they go back and revolt, so they can't get nobody to reap the crop they was mm -hmm. losing. And the government opened it up back, and it lasted many years after that. They used plane and go to the West in another island and mm -hmm. get So if they deny foreigners from coming here, pretty soon you won't be able to eat because meat, vegetable, and that will be so expensive that you can't eat. They, ha they can't do it without foreigners because a lot of the natives, they won't work. Mm -hmm. Because when I was around young, I bought my house from the early 60s. I start by property. Another thing I had to tell you about. Back in the early 50s, you couldn't get more than a $5,000 loan from the bank them down, downtown mm -hmm. there. But at the same time, you have more than 12, 20, what you call Harbor Shark Bank, where they charge you 20% interest if you borrow money. Mm. But Shark? you could get any mm. amount of money if you have any asset or have some money in the asset that you have. Like a house, you have X amount of money and mm. running short and need some more money. They loan it to you with the intention to take it away from you. Mm. So we start out with what you call a um, partnership and pass money around like 10 of you join, it will be a thousand, um, 10 of you $10, that's a mm hundred -hmm. dollar plus with your money and the other, the draw round and round. And it helped a lot. It wasn't until um, r um, Kennedy become president in 1960 mm -hmm. that the bank become so liberal and all that. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Ganja industry. Yeah. yeah. Well. How I, many acres you have? You mean gan ganja? Ganja. Yeah. I never use no job. Yeah. Me well, yeah. I tell you to be frank. <laughs> Medical for medical medical, medical ganja, well, look, whether medical or local ganja, which I could have used because I had friends that used it, but I never, mm -hmm. I never did. I don't know, mm -hmm. I just born that way. Mm -hmm. and, but um, it's a big thing now. It's for medical purposes. I mean, a very big thing. Epilepsy. But look, you know, I tell you, you know. even now, mm -hmm. I still don't really endorse it to that point. I'll tell you why, because I have seen so many guys mess themselves up. If you can control yourself, it's all right. Mm. But, you know, it's just like alcohol. Mm. People become mm. a drunk and, mm. you know, mm. yeah. So, oh yeah, so, but it go very well, you know, so. Oh, yeah. Well, well, we gotta, we gotta wrap this up, but it's been all an right. honor for me to, to, to yeah, talk with yeah. you. Um, very appreciative of you coming on to the show. Um, we can talk a little bit more after. I got some things for you to sign. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's it. We got to wrap it up here for the uh, Jamaica Diaspora Show. But uh, we'll be back next week with more programming on Harvard Public Access Television. Yeah. Thank you for joining us.